Hello gorgeous people, so it's Sue's Crystal Wolf on Crow Fire Talk for Chat a Witch Wednesday. I'm filming this on a Friday, unfortunately. I haven't got round to doing it this week. Um, I've been really busy trying to catch up with my um, Yggdrasil Path course um, and some other stuff. I've been um, as making a healing poppet for um, Diane, who's um, on um, the Half Space with me and uh, Mastery Rune course. Um, so um, she's been diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. So we are um, doing a lot of healing and stuff. So I made that healing poppet. Um, I made a little nature poppet a couple of weeks ago so that's just for me to um, really connect in with nature when I can't get outside um, and stuff and to do nature work stuff indoors so anyway today um, I thought I would talk about crystal skulls why crystal skulls why um, a lot of people hate them and a lot of people are guardians of them so um it's it's a bit like marmite you love them or you hate them i was told that um crystals where they're shaped um you progress up so um you a lot of people that get to um a place where they really um, connect with spheres and stuff it just elevates and goes up to crystal skulls now I sold crystals for years and um, and I've collected um, and been a guardian of crystals for years I'm surrounded by them in this room um, I hated skulls with a passion I didn't understand it I didn't know why people would first of all carve a beautiful crystal into a skull secondly i didn't have a clue why someone would buy them and when i was selling i refused to sell them even though um you know they sell well and i could have possibly made money but um i hated them and um one day i went to glastonbury and um i was in yin and yang and there was um, a lovely display of jet and stuff and there was some lovely pieces but there was a lot of skulls amongst it and um, there was this little skull little tiny jet skull bob there he is in all his glory little bob um and I just had to have him. I I didn't understand why. It was like going back on all that I'd ever said. And um, but anyway, I bought him. And uh, when I bought him, the lady that sold him to me said, um, "Is that your first? And I said, "Yes." She said, "Oh dear." So I was like, "It's a bit of a weird thing to say." Um, and then further down the line, I realised, oh dear, meant that if you buy one, you buy hundreds. And Crystal Skull Guardians, what we sort of call ourselves, not collectors as such. Um, I suppose some people are collectors. They just collect um, them because they like them. You'll have to excuse the noise going on in the background because the dog's barking I think someone's at the door um so yeah I bought Bob and then I bought a little smoky quartz one not too big again and then it just exploded every time I saw a skull I wanted it or a different um material you know i mean i i love quartz quartz is one of my absolute favorite um crystals i tend to gravitate towards quartz 
smoky quartz um i i just love quartz um and um so yeah and then it just exploded and now i uh, i couldn't just have them i needed to know why i had them and i needed to understand what they were and why and stuff so i started researching and i found an amazing book um, by jack van etten and um he he explained in there that when crystals are carved it, it was all quite scientific part in the book and it was all that um they'd done like um scientific investigation of when you carve a crystal so if, if you if you have a crystal and you leave it natural it's got its emanations it's got its energy and vibrations but when you start to carve them into specific things there seems their energy expands and stuff so um and when you get to carving a skull the energy expands more so th they hold more vibration than any other shape of crystal so that was fascinating to me and then um, I joined a website um, that was all people that collected skulls and um, I learned loads from some amazing people um, on that site and I think I'm still friends with a couple of people I'm not on the site anymore I don't even know if the site exists anymore and I don't know what it was called um but yeah it's fascinating but i've met lots of people since that are skull guardians and we are a weird bunch um we definitely just keep getting them and we get hooked to them as i was starting to investigate people were saying oh they talk to you now i've always spoken to my crystals so this is the part that you might turn off and never come back to my channel and totally understandable because I sound like a nutter but I've always spoke to my crystals and I've always felt like they spoke to me back and it's been quite a deep thing I would um, walk past a crystal on a shelf and I would hear it go hello and I would think right okay and I would pick it up and say hello and give it a kiss yes I guess my crystals hence why you might turn off and disappear but you know um each their own <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm not insane but um yeah quirky um so i i started to hear people say that the skulls were here to download consciousness to us and to give us um understanding of things and that they can talk to you about all sorts of different things you can use them for divination you can do readings with them and i was like mm, i believe that you can do readings with crystals so i'd done that for years um and i think i think i learned about crystal uh, divination from cassandra easing so it was like simple, you know, you'd have uh, quite a few different crystals in a, in a bag and then like the runes, you'd pull them out and you'd read what that crystal meant or why it was for that person. And you could do a full reading with a whole set of crystals. So I, I, I believe that I done it. I used it. So why can't you talk to crystal skulls? I was like. Mm, but that's just taking me a little bit to the edge there so and um and then i um oh god what was there was i that i met sharon elk um as well uh who's the skull lady or was uh, known by a lot of people as the skull lady I bumped into her in Glastonbury. But I, I'd scared the living daylights out of her, I think, because I just jumped on her because I was, so, I was so excited to meet her. And I knew that she, you know, was one of the people that was saying, you know, they talk to us, 
they they have information and obviously I was looking up like the Mitchell Hedges skull and um and I and and there's a beautiful story of um one of the high high priestesses of Atlantis who um knew that it was uh, going to be destroyed and she put all her consciousness into this crystal skull um so um but you know that's all myth and do we believe it and you know there's no like um proof um and stuff but i knew i'd watch stuff with people going and meeting the mitchell hedges skull and i must admit when i see pictures of it or videos of that skull and i think there's um a, a few others i can't think of the name shah uh shah Ra. i should i i'm not very good at remembering sort of that sort of information it just goes out my head dates names all sorts of things like that can just disappear out of my head um and you know there were there was there was a lot of books there was a lot of people there was a lot of people saying you know certain skulls certain carvings were holding different energies and stuff and it was all really getting really fascinating and there was some people that were starting to sort of produce different types of skulls uh, like the carvings um so um there was a lot of the carvings out there were like very generic, probably coming from China carvings that weren't um, that super. Um, and then there was some more unusual carvings and, it, 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 you know, there was lots of different people coming. There was Raven coming up. He was carving they all um, Raven skulls. Uh, do you know what? I don't even know now if that's a woman. Was it a woman or a man? Oh my god, my brain. Choice ridiculous. Anyway, I, I apologize for anyone any information I'm getting wrong. Um some of it I do know. <laughs> so I'm not quite as um uh, do you know what I'm sitting with a table full of skulls here and I'm sure they're messing with me actually, but um so um yeah, so I I, I was quite fascinated with these stories that were coming up, but I hadn't really had like a really like in your face thing with any of my skulls. I had, I mean, I, I felt like they gave me names, but part of me was like, did I just say the name? Um, you know, I mean, when I called Bob, Bob, um, I felt that Bob wanted to be Bob he sort of said he was Bob um but my brain was like well I've just made that up I've just called him Bob um but as it went on I was starting to feel mm, I don't know there's more to this and um I went to the um rock and gem show at Kempton Park I used to go to the rock and gem show a lot and um, I used to buy off certain people. I used to buy off the mineral warehouse a lot um, and a few other people. And this day I was walking along um, and there was a guy and his wife. She was Chinese. Um, and so she went out to China a lot and she had carvings done and stuff. And um, there was a lot of skulls on the table so I was quite drawn anyway because by this time I was drawn anywhere there were skulls I was like oh my god um and there was a obsidian skull quite ugly um sitting there and I picked it up and it was a really good price for quite a substantial piece of obsidian um and I pull it down and I walked off and I heard, hello, <laughs> I was like, and I was with someone as well. And uh, I was like, who's saying hello? Um, and it was, hello, hello, excuse me, um, you've put me down. And I'm like, that skull can't be talking to me. That's like, 
think I've lost it, completely lost the plot. And I heard, hello, my name is, um, forgotten his name. That how, I'm telling you they're playing with me here. Right. I, I was going to think, like, shall I just start this video again? Because it's all over the place. Um, but I'm, I'm going to leave it because I think they're just toying with me. So, um, uh, hello, my name is Dimitri Lafontaine. And I was like, I wouldn't make that up. Where would I get that name from? So I turned around and I said to the person that I was with, that skull is speaking to me. And they just went, yeah, it's like matter of fact. And I went, he's just told me his name is Dimitri Lafontaine. He's like, oh, maybe that's his name. I was like, no, you get, you get far, you know, on your spiritual path. And yeah, you do. I mean, I've had some very amazing encounters. I've had encounters with gnomes, um, and they've been verified because the first encounter I had was in my friend's house um, where I run my spiritual group um, and I had seen this gnome that kept appearing behind it was behind her she had a plant on the floor and it used to step out and look at me and I didn't tell anyone because I'm running this group and I don't want people to think I completely need looking away somewhere um so i didn't tell anyone and it went on for weeks this gnome he just poked his head out sort of hi i'm here i'm watching everything you're doing i'm interested um you know no bad energies very nice and um i moved um from where i normally sat and um i sat on a sofa opposite with um another lady and uh, I saw him poke his head out and she went, oh God, that gnome's here again. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> it's, like, it's not just me. Okay, it might be mass hysteria as people say, but that was like, that's confirmation. That's good. I know he's there. I knew he was there anyway and I sort of believed it, but it's this trust thing of like, you know, are, are you losing the plot? Are you, you know, going mad? And then another time I took a group out for a full moon ritual and um, they, um, a lot of them were looking over at um, a really thick fern sort of place um, and um, I was standing because we were in like a ring of trees um, and I was standing there and behind a tree came this uh, gnome and um, he just stood looking there and I was like, okay, right, that's fine. He's, he's fine. Um, and the others were looking behind and one turned round who was quite fearful and she went, oh, there's a gnome. And I went, oh yeah, yeah, he's there. He's just watching what we're doing. He's, you know, it's his space. Uh, we're being respectful. So it's, it's, it's fine. It's okay. Um, and then, of course, all the others turn around to look at him and he stood there, which is very unusual because normally then they like disappear and, you know, back through the veil or whatever. But he, he wasn't going anywhere. And he stayed until we finished the ritual and then he just disappeared. Um, but, you know, there was one, two, three, four, five, six seven odd people who saw him so you know like I say mass hysteria maybe um but that was interesting but this skull saying what he said and of course I bought him so I'm going to show you him he is cheeky and naughty um and that's maybe why he took my brain away this is him see he isn't spectacularly carved to bless him um and but he he is quite lovely he um i use mostly for shadow work um 
I think because the cheekiness of him, he is a bit of a trickster. He's got a bit of Loki-esque energy to him. Um, and you can't, you can't call him Dimitri because he gets really feisty. It's Dimitri Lafontaine. You have to say the name. He revels in you saying the name. It's, yeah. So, see, <laughs> I might. Maybe I am a bit mental, I don't know. Um, anyway, so um, he's been used in some uh, ritual work with someone who had to get a lot of uh, really horrible energy out um, and um, he, he just manages to, to get energy out of you. So, he, he, yeah, he's fun. Um, now, um, funny enough, the... the, the my Crowfire talk, Crowfire talk page on Facebook, Crowfire now as my YouTube channel. Um, this is Crowfire talk. So he he came from the mineral warehouse. So I think he was probably carved in China. He's got very square, cheeky bones. He's he's not. I mean, again, he's not a brilliant carving. He weighs a ton. Um, he he's quite chatty um, he was uh, like I say why I named um, this what well, I named it because he'd give me information and um, I'd get um, writings and all sorts so um, it, it just it, it transpired to um, the page and the YouTube channel so um and then i um i had i had a bit of money um come through at some point and um i treated myself to um a leandro skull so master carver leandro um he is a brazilian carver and his work is is known and you know you get a certificate with it and everything and um so i bought stardust this is stardust he's a citrine skull um not huge but you know i couldn't have afforded anything bigger from leandro <laughs> um and i i love this this is sunshine and uh, funnily enough called stardust but um is sunshine and um connects with the sun connects with raw energies um it's, it's just it's full of rain he's full of rainbows um i was only buying one but this little beauty um a bit of dust in your eye love um this little beauty wanted to come to me as well so i got this which is more of a smoky he's very dusty more of a smoky um citrine still but it's more smoky um and uh, this one's called rainbow skull shaman so um yeah um he's got a long name um so and then I'll, I'll just uh, show you another Leandro, which I got later on, which is a Traveller. These are carved in this way. So, um, and he's a hematoid quartz. So I have got a smaller one that goes with him. Um, so they're my Leandros. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. I've forgotten her. She won't be happy. This is a little... Uh, child one um, and uh, this is very special because this is a um, Lemurian and I don't know whether you can see the little striations which makes it a Lemurian crystal so very special this is Moon um, and she she's got some really magical energies so i've done a bit with her and she is quite magical indeed um and this one is a weirdie this is a phantom he's got like lots of bits in and uh 
don't know whether you can see it. no you can't see there's lines in which is how you know he's a phantom it means it's grown and then stopped and then grown it's got loads in this one it's really lovely um and uh yeah i've done some really unique work with that one and then you can get ones like this with a little pointy head um this one's beautiful this is thoth these are lovely turquoise um yeah so i've got hundreds so i can't you know ever show you all of them but i thought i would just show you a few so um a lot of people like pick certain things so like D dimitri lafontaine he does like shadowy work and it's not just because he's obsidian but when i connected in with him it was that sort of energy um, I had quite a, a lovely experience the other day with Stardust. I was doing some work with my Yggdrasil path um, and um, we had to connect him with some energies and stuff. And he appeared um, in the room to me as this crystalline, um, really tall being um, of citrine, like, you, you know, really glass-like, ethereal um uh, really interesting um i've had that before with crystals because i work with the divas so um or spirits or angels of the crystals people use different words i prefer diva but um a lot of people like the angel so the angel of quartz and i have discussed this before in some other videos but goodness knows what ones they were um so you know you might work with a piece of quartz um, but you might want to work with the whole energy of quartz. So then you would work with the the crystal angel of quartz or the di the crystal diva of quartz, which then encompasses all the quartz. So it's like the, the spirit of all quartz. Whereas if you're working with crow fire, you're working with his spirit, this actual piece of quartz. Yes. It still connects to the mother um, diva of quartz, um, but it, it it's more specific. It's like the um, the personality in this specific piece of quartz. Now, a lot of people say the the spirit comes from the carver, and I think when you're when you're working with a Leandro. You do, I mean, he really, um, oh God, yeah, he, you, you feel it in all of his pieces. You really do that, that you can feel some of him, um, which makes sense because, you know, he's an artist. I mean, I think with a lot of the mass produced skulls sort of coming from China and places like that, that they, they hold the energy of the crystal but i think you do need to like clean them more and connect in um because they're more money orientated pieces where they're just put out there to, you know to make money so that there, there's not the love and the connection and you know master carvers i mean jewelers that make bespoke pieces of jewellery there's the energy in there of that person whereas mass producing pieces you know in factories is just it hasn't got it it can't have the same i mean there may be a couple of pieces that come out of a factory that have the energy because maybe the person doing it does love what they're doing um and does put that energy into them um I think a lot of people that work with crystals like cutting stones and things because if you talk to them or listen to them speak they do discuss like the the crystal spoke to me the gem wanted to be cut this way it it showed me what it wanted um and I think that's true so but in a factory that where they're just mass producing it's just not the same as making a piece of artwork you know if 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 this was 
made um in a factory you know just like people doing each little bit i i mean it, they just don't hold the same i mean i make these slow stitch um and you know i put in a hell of a lot of work so they they you know i cut out the main body um and then i sew individually little pieces of fabric all over it and each piece of fabric i'm connecting in with what i want from the poppet or connection so obviously when i did diane's one i was connecting in with diane i was connecting in with healing i was sending love i was you know every little stitch had love and connection and my thoughts were diane so you know you can't do that in a factory you it just wouldn't work so um so some are you you know that you can feel how special they are straight away um some you just see the beauty of the crystal so you you you're connecting with that crystal um but yeah, it's been a funny journey with the skulls because like I said, I just hated them with a passion. I really hated them. I didn't get them. And maybe that was before, you know, because you see them as death and, and you know, they're on poison bottles and things like that. And it just, it just gives you that energy of death. But when you realise that actually that's not what they're holding, what they're holding is knowledge and wisdom in in that being carved as as the head you know it, it's all about that it's all about that knowledge and wisdom because crystals are record keepers they have energies they have knowledge within them you can you can get you know if the, i mean obviously some people pick up a crystal and they go it's a lump it's a rock it's, it's, it's and they get nothing and even people, you know, even spiritual people aren't connected to crystals. And that's absolutely fine because that's not their thing. Uh, some of us are just have this weird connection that you can't explain. And it's like, um, you know, you, you could go in a shop of thousands of just skulls, crystal skulls, you know, and you might like the... the all of them because you you like crystal skulls and whatever but there'll only be a couple of pieces that will really talk to you um unless you're one of those people that just are collecting so you you are well i haven't got a lapis or i haven't got this and and so you're looking for a specific piece um but um most of most of us sort of skull guardians we sort of know and and um i belong to a pre-loved um crystal site on um, facebook run by an amazing lady um and um you know we we sell on there i mean not just crystal skulls but there is a lot of skulls passed on and um you know it can take a long time you can you can see loads of posts of loads of skulls and things being sold and um it, but you know one will just like literally it, it launches itself at you and goes I've got to, I've got to be with you I've got to come home and sometimes you get them and they go on a shelf and you think well I'm not working with it but you know it's doing whatever it's doing in the background so I've had um, I've had some people say to me oh well you're just uh, you just collect them you don't work with them all no I don't work with I don't physically work with each piece but it's doing what it's doing in the background I mean some people buy books and they put them on a shelf and don't ever read them and and people believe that just owning the energy of that book that actually somehow it translates what it needs to say to you without actually reading it okay that's a bit woo woo but um but it's a woo woo I connect with. It's woo woo I get. Um, so and then other pieces are really intense. Um, I have um, a uh, uh, it's it's a really weird carving. It's like I got a skull head and it's like a wand and it's flat on the back 
and I believe, but it wasn't bought as, I believe it's Leandro D'Souza's son, Igor, uh, and I saw one piece he was carving the other day on Instagram, and uh, and I said to him, I've got one like that, um, but, you know, I might have to show him it and say, is, is this one of yours? Um, and I bought that in Tintagel, and that was one. Um, it was sitting in the display case, and it was screaming at me, absolutely screaming at me. That I've, you know, you've got to take me home, you've got to have me. And I was like, oh, God, I, I really... And I don't think I had the funds at the time. I think it was like, oh, my God, because I think it was about... I think it was about £98. It's not too big either. It's like, um, and yeah, I came home with it, <laughs> and I love him, Isaac. Oh, he gave me his name really strong. It was like my name is Isaac, uh, and um, I was like, wow, okay. And I use him a lot when I'm doing a reading, whether it's cards, whether it's runes. I uh, might have him in my hand. I might have him just on the side. Um, but and he's always near when I'm sitting, when I'm doing anything on the computer. He's always near. Um, he he yeah. He's very very. He's just quartz, just quartz. He's he's just quartz, and he's stunning. I should have actually got him, shouldn't I, to show you? But um, he's over there. Um, but I I may do another video on some more skulls or something at another time. But anyway, I thought I'd just put this up. Um, so why crystal skulls? Why not? They're fun. It's great. Uh, the only um, uh, thing I would say about crystal skulls is um, money. <laughs> they drain your bank account. Um, and yeah, I mean, and the pre-loved is great because um, you work with certain ones for a certain length of time and then they they say i want to move on and um, so that's really cool because you can move them on they've done their job with you they've imparted whatever they they needed to impart to you and then they move on um that is really cool um i when when i first sort of found out people were doing that i was like how could you give away you you know even or selling them how could you do that how could you get rid of you know because they're like their family and um but yeah you just know it and 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 if you keep them the ones you're not meant to if you keep them it's almost like they it's, this sounds really woo woo it's like they die it's like their energy just shuts off um and then it and then if you then pass them on it's going to take a while for it to um you know to 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 unlock it again to to set up that energy again so um yeah if they if they want to go you let them go now you might give them away um uh but um they cost us a lot of money so most people sell them. <laughs> not for what you got either so <laughs> although with leandro you you can sort of get the money because they are you know uh, he is a master carver and and they do hold the price and stuff and you as long as you've got all the certificates and stuff although most people can look at them and say yeah i know that's a leandro um you know people want the um want the authenticity i mean because other people are now carving so like a magical child skull um you know they just carvers can can look at that and they, and they can replicate obviously um that sort of shape and stuff um so i mean if you if you really really connect i mean it doesn't really matter you know whether it is a leandro or not if you connect with that crystal but it's, it's like it's like buying a pair of prada shoes um, you know, would you want your Prada shoes to be cheap copies from Primark? Not really. If you want Prada, I mean, I don't buy designer. I, I, <laughs> I buy designer skulls. 
were not close, um, as you can probably tell. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, it's funny, um, one day at work, um, I, uh, a lady came in and she um, was looking around my shop and she put her handbag on the counter. It was spectacular. And I said, oh, I love your handbag. She said, oh, she said, I, um, I have a problem. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, dear. She said, yeah. She said, that's actually, I think, my most expensive one. She said, but I, I have a thing for designer handbags. And I think it was about 700. And you're going back a good 10 or maybe more years and uh, I went blimey and uh, she said yes her husband doesn't know how much I paid for that one and um, I said oh I couldn't spend that on a on a handbag and uh, my work colleague who was my friend <laughs> said but you would on the skull I was like mm, yeah probably if I had the money I might um, so yeah, it's quite funny, um, but um, yeah, they're 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 interesting. They're um, to work with. There is a difference. Um, I like working with all crystals. I like my spheres. I like um, my platonic solids in like different, you know, Merkabahs and things like that. Um, I like you know my wands. I like all my crystals. Um, but there is a, a special thing with the skulls. Um, it, it's, it is really, it, it's been quite a journey with them and I, I've loved every bit now. I really, really hope you like this video. I really, really hope <laughs> you put a like, that you don't disappear and I lose subscriptions. Um, but I just, I just wanted to talk about them and I know it does seem a bit woo woo to a lot of people. You know people that are spiritual but this takes it a bit out into the woo woo land and um, they're not prepared to go there and i totally understand that and i'm really i was the same i do and even when i tell the story of dimitri lafontaine um it is woo woo and and it and it <laughs> it did it still shocks me the story and I tell the story and I know I'm not making the story up but it's like it's so out there you think but anyway so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like it um yeah I just um speak to you soon and um love and blessings and take care bye